This video introduces the socio-cultural elements of aviation. Let's see what those are. To understand socio-culture, I have split it into two parts. First, it's social, referring to the interaction of people. Culture refers to the values and practices. That means uh, what is acceptable and not acceptable, what is right and what is not right for each culture. And sociocultural refers to, inter to the interactions of both society and culture. The cultural structures can be divided into different dimensions. One dimension is the national culture. So, for instance, if we look at a country, what is the culture in that country? Another dimension is the organization culture. So, within each organization, each firm, uh, there is a different culture inside. And that refers to that. And third and last is the industry culture, which is for the whole industry, and in this case we are going to apply it for aviation, uh, there are certain features which apply for the whole industry. Within the national culture, referring to behaviors that define the way of living, we have the following dimension. First one is masculinity versus femininity. Masculinity cultures are those that give preference for achievements compared to femininity cultures which give preference for cooperation. The second is individualism versus collectivism. Among individualism cultures we can think in Anglo-Saxon countries, for instance and on collectivist cultures we can think on most of the Asian countries, as for instance China. The third is the power of distance. And it refers, for instance, the interpersonal power between a boss and a subordinate. Countries with a high power of distance are referred also as being very hierarchical. And if we mix to, to collectivism with a high power of distance, we can be in a situation in which a subordinate is going to have a lot of difficulties to speak to the boss. When we think in culture, very often our mind goes to different countries. But also culture refers to the organization. It means that different companies inside has different cultures. And this is referred sometimes as corporate culture. One example is organizations which are more hierarchical versus other more flat organizations. Hierarchical means me, the boss, is very well clear versus the uh, employees. Whether flat uh, organizations tend to treat more equally one and the others. The second is to stick to the rules versus being tolerant to differences. For instance, uh, in my own culture, we tend to have lunch late, let's say at 2 o'clock. So I can be working in an organization which says, no, no, you have to eat at noon, 12 o'clock, and that's the time. Or it could be other that is more flexible in the uh, eating times, and you say, you can eat whenever you have the time and we have this period of time. This could be an example. And the culture that applies for the whole industry is called industry culture. And here we are interested on the aviation case. Within the culture of aviation, we want to look at two elements. One are languages, and the other is the terminology. When we talk about languages, there are two languages which are broadly spoken in aviation. One is English, as the main communication language, and the second is the ICAO phonetic alphabet, or aeronautical alphabet. English is the official language of aviation. And here we can look at different examples. At the air traffic control, when there is a communication between the tower and the pilot, English is the language normally used. When we look at the manuals and technical information provided by the aircraft manufacturers, English, again, is the language used. When we walk through an airport, no matter in which country you are, you're always going to have the local language 
and English, if, not, if it's not the local language. English is a very useful uh, language when you travel, but also it has become the main working language for business. A for Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie belong to the ICAO phonetic alphabet. It was born in 1952 and also is called NATO phonetic alphabet, mainly used as a spelling tool in the communications between payloads and ATC. If you want to practice a little bit this IKEA alphabet, I propose you the following exercise. You can practice for two minutes. Stop this video and look at each of the letters of this alphabet. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and so on. And try to say your name. As an example, I will let you mind. My name is Luis, which is Lima, Uniform, India, Sierra. What is your name? But before IKEA alphabet started to use in 52, other alphabets were used. For instance, the British Royal Navy was using one which, if I used to spell my name, my name will be London Uncle Ink Sugar. If I use the one used by the US, my name will be Love Uncle Item Sugar. Aviation, beyond using specific languages, it uses also a specific terminology. For measuring capacity, it uses number of seats, and for measuring traffic, it uses the number of passengers. But we will see that in a case study of a route between Istanbul and Madrid in Spain. As a summary of the socio, that means people, cultural elements of, of aviation, we saw there are two main groups. One is the referring to languages, and the other one refers to aviation terms. On the first one, we saw that English is the main language used in aviation, plus the ICAO alphabet that is only commonly used. On aviation tests, we have capacity, mainly talking about seats, and traffic, mainly talking about passengers. Thank you for listening.